Well, hey everybody. Well, here's gonna be a little review on the Polaris Ranger 900. Uh, XP model, high output. Um, we have, i just show you guys the mileage and uh, I actually just got back from checking cows, so. Uh, just about 100 hours on it. Over 700 miles on it now. So it's it's a pretty early review, I'd say. Um, we got it last October in 2017. Um, I'm gonna start from the front here, I guess. Uh, standard, this one has standard Polaris tires on. The usual, <laughs> usual tread stuff. Um, does have a place for a winch up here, of course, as most do. We don't need one on here. The front, small front bumper. Um, the lights on it are very bright. I do like the lights on here. However, they could have maybe did something a little bit different. Put strap you on my head here real quick. Easier with two hands, everything here. You just turn those things to pull out and just slide out then. You have access to your coolant reservoir and pull it around a little bit. I can actually inspect the radiator a little bit. Looks relatively clean down there. Um, one thing I don't like about the lights, though, is when you want to, because I have to adjust them right away, they weren't set quite right. Um, but the only thing you have to adjust them is, there's a little screw here, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little screw here that's kind of in a slotted uh, piece of plastic on the frame here. Um, that's how you use to adjust it up and down. It's on that little slot, you loosen that screw and then you can adjust them, but it's kind of finicky though. Uh, to get them where you want them to. They could have had maybe a little bit better uh, adjustment mechanism on there to get the lights set a little bit easier where you want them to, but no big deal. But pretty straightforward and simple up here. Put this back on, should just line up right here. I gotta find the hole. Right there somewhere. Come on, right there. Come on. There. Strap them down tight. And you're back in then. Um, it's got the front windshield on. Oh, it's not a fully enclosed cab, it's just uh, partial, I guess. Um, when it gets really dusty out, you do get some dust swirling in here a little bit because of the kind of the vacuum it creates. Um, no big deal, but it's nice though when it's for colder weather. It's nice to have the front windshield on, as well for for rain and whatnot a little bit. Well, it's pretty easy to put the windshields on though. They got a holder here, strap in, and then also inside here then too. Uh, oh jeez, right here with the topper. Then they got uh, screws on either side. Then also the topper can actually be removed if you really want it to be. You know, once you take the you know. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. But I know they revamped these, though. Uh, the guy, the dealer said, I forget what they did. I think used before, it just used to be these plastic clips up front and then on back here. But now they finally added in uh, two bolts here on the topper on either side. And I think, yeah, on the back side, too, they even added a few as well. Four going along the back as well. So... They have strapped that now, a little bit stronger compared to past models. Back window is pretty easy to remove. You just, you know, it's just on these holders and then um, these handles then. You rotate them and then the window can just actually fall out if you don't want it in. So, but the front winch is a little bit tougher to take out though once it's in. Just because of these screws and bolts in here. As you can see, there is place for a front wheel windshield wiper. If you, you know, have more options, more features, have an enclosed cab, you know, you'd probably have a windshield wiper up on here. Uh, this mirror is not factory. This is just a mirror I slapped on. My brother had a mirror that he found, so free mirror. It's a little loose again now. I gotta tighten that up again, but yeah, it works okay. Kinda have to peer your head down a little bit to look further back, but you know, mirror is a mirror. Uh, we don't have any mirrors on the side because, well, they'll just get busted off the cattle and whatnot. Uh, so we're just going to leave side view mirrors off. Don't need them. More stuff to break. 
Um, ours just has the mesh siding here for doors, you know, the usual, but we took off that side. It doesn't take much, it's just one, two, three bolts, and then it just comes out then, so. Uh, just because we get in and out so often, um, we took that side up, but this side we left on though. Um, I do have rear view, rear lights on here. I actually installed them myself. Um, as you can see, I had a switch up here. All right here's my switch. Wired it into a relay by the battery here. Um, when I was doing that too, like when I was running those wires, it actually wasn't that bad at all running the wires through here, running to the switch up here. Uh, taking that floor panel off there and it actually wasn't too bad. There's actually surprisingly there is room to work with stuff here somewhat um, It wasn't actually too bad at all Even noticing back here a little bit too um, Well, not this side. This side is the exhaust, but um, I'll actually flip up the thing right now, but the tailgate has two handles on either side I'm gonna fall over sit you down there toolbox oh yeah you're getting dusty I gotta blow out that air filter uh, but actually it's not too bad for like the amount of stuff I mean it looks pretty uh you know open in here and I mean there's it seems like there is some space it's not so cramped um so it's kind of easy to to wire in those lights wasn't too bad at all easy to change oil very easy but you do have to remove a uh, uh, Remove this intake here or cooling. I think that goes with the clutch or the belt or something. I think that's what that's for. But it's just a hose clamp here. You take that off, then you have access to your filter right here. Oil fill, oil check is on the other side. Drain plug underneath. Pretty easy changing oil on them. Pretty easy. Um, the air filter here. Uh, dealer said <clears throat> after, and when you're working in dusty conditions, you're supposed to clean this out with some, or I should say not clean this out, uh, clean the filter off with light um, light compressed air. Um, clean the filter off a little bit because they have a tendency to get real dusty in a hurry. If you're in dusty conditions, you can see all the dust from past few days. I've been using it. Um, so I, gotta, I should actually take that out here and lightly blow it out a little bit. Because if you don't, it actually will start sucking engine oil because the way they have the I think the breather line from the engine actually goes into the air box here um, so it'll actually if that filter gets plugged it'll start sucking engine oil so the dealer said so I'm gonna listen to his instruction there I guess um, these mud flaps here uh, I actually put them on here on both front and back um, these are just some old mud flaps they have laying around. I don't know what the heck they were for, but I uh, kind of just deflect some of the manure away from this, the paneling on the side. Um, as anybody knows who we are, we like to keep try to keep our stuff clean when we can, when it's possible. And I also put some rubber mud flaps here too on either side. Uh, just uh, I think I had to drill one hole. I forget where it was again. It could have been up here. I forget which hole I had to drill, but two bolts, and then I actually put a zip tie around one of the, around the frame here, this beam here. Um, essentially, this mud flap, it, it uh, keeps poop away from up here. I mean, you guys can might be able to see in there a little bit, but it looks pretty clean up there. You'll see once I get to the battery compartment, it'll it's pretty clean up there. Same with the other side, too. Uh, just deflects majority of the manure and whatnot away from everything up here. I mean, a little bit will still get in yet, but it actually looks pretty clean up there yet. Just kind of keeps everything tidier. Less stuff up there. So, they work good. I wish this could be an option, but you know, it's pretty easy to slap some something like this on yourself. Keeps the cost down too. A um, couple grease points on the suspension, of course. I think the back has four, the front has three on either side. I'm not sure if, I look in the book of the drive line might have something. Yeah, there's something right there on the drive line there. I'm not sure if there's anything on the uh, U-joints at all. I'm not sure because they look pretty sealed. I have to double check on that though. It's a Pro Star engine for those wondering. It's a Pro Star engine. I think that's probably Polaris's 
thing so but this tailgate or the uh, the box um, can actually be tilted back even more yet if you actually remove this um, shock and pin back here right here you move this pin you take this cable out and you unhook the shock it'll actually tip all the way down and actually hit the tire then you got a lot of room here to uh, work with that's what I did for changing oil too I did that and uh, made it a lot easier getting in here then so slam it down and it's locked back in one thing about the tailgate it's just the tailgate seems kind of cheap to be quite honest uh, seems like it's something's cheap on the inside but as you see it doesn't want to open you kind of have to you know be pulling on it then jiggle it then it'll go then it does that every now and then sometimes it'll open sometimes it just won't though like something's just like the mechanism is cheap or something or something's not quite set right in here um, I might actually open that up sometime I see there's some screws here when I get time open that up and see what's going on but uh, don't know why it does it a little bit cheap I guess they could have did a little bit better there um, standard receiver hitch it's you know pretty common I think it's a two inch it's for a standard receiver hitch on most light duty pickups as well so we got a high um, tongue to make sure the trailers get off the ground enough they don't hit anything don't hang solo the shocks do have adjustment back here you got different settings here I don't know if the front has it I'm not sure if the front has has it oh yeah the front does have it yeah front has it as well but they do provide a tool in their tool kit but it's I like using a big um, uh, pliers instead a uh, whatever you want to call them again name right now channel lock pliers works the best but they do have a small tool kit they bring you know a tire tester and some other tools they actually have a pliers and yeah here's the shock shocks for the shocks um, I don't doesn't work that great you need you're, you don't have enough leverage put it that way you don't have enough leverage to uh, adjust them but they got a, some handy tools in here allen wrenches torque wrenches some other stuff here just in case you're in a pickle you can have some tools at your disposal, which is usually standard by Polaris, as far as I know. Compared to our, with our four-wheelers as well. It's pretty standard stuff you usually send the toolkit on. Um, yeah, the cab, pretty simple, not much here. The steering wheel actually has tilt. So you can adjust that. Uh, ignition, gears, it's automatic, high, low, neutral, reverse, park. One thing I don't like is I wish it had like a it had a actual parking brake on it. Um, because right now I think this is just for the transmission. Once you have it in park, I think that's just for the transmission. Um, there is no like e-brake. Only thing you have for brakes is this. There's actually no um, e-brake at all, which you know even it just could be a little hand thing even too. Um, would be kind of nice to have to be able to pull that brake too. You know, for transport or whatnot, you're hauling it somewhere parked on hills or something. Don't know if you always want to rely on this, especially if I have it like I have a fencing trailer on back. You know, I kind of have to park a certain way just so I know the thing's not going to move. Um, lights off, uh, dims, brights. Uh, your for your transmission. This is turf mode. Turf mode is essentially. Uh, the way it's set up, the differential will actually kick out one of the wheels uh, when you're turning, or it'll actually only turn the wheel with the least resistance. So you can make real nice tight turns, turns on a dime, turns real good. Um, but the middle switch here is the actually locks the rear wheels together then, which I rarely ever use. I don't think I've ever used it yet, but... And then there's four-wheel drive then all wheels are locked together then um, but most of the time 90 over 90 percent of the time I'm either in turf mode or and the rest of the time it'll be four-wheel drive I rarely just have it uh, locked just have the rear wheels locked rear 
Like I said, I don't think I've ever did it before. Either turf mode or all-wheel drive, one or the other. Of course, my switch for my rear lights right there. Two 12-volt sockets here at your disposal. Um, cup, couple cubby hose, cubby hole here, down here, 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 and of course, I had this open here. Um, cup holders. I think that's pretty standard stuff on Rangers. Um, yeah. Kind of wish they had a handle here. I mean, they have it on that side. You wouldn't mind having a handle here, since I know you're supposed to have two hands on your steering wheel, but you know, it's nice to have a handle here, though. Getting in and out, you know, just something nice to have. Wouldn't mind having that. Yeah, that's the cab. Um, fuel tank, 10 gallon fuel tank. It's actually pretty good on fuel, surprisingly. Uh, actually lasts quite a while. Doesn't seem too bad on fuel. Um, uh, the seat is actually removable. I think, yeah, there's a there's a lever back here. You actually um, pull up on it and the seat can actually come off. And you actually have a storage tray underneath here, storage compartment. You just do, you just pull up on it, yeah, then it comes out. But I don't want to pull out because it's kind of finicky though. But yeah, you got a storage tray underneath there. Just slam down and lock back in then. Um, the seat belt, there's actually, they have a safety switch in the this seat belt. As you notice, I have this seat belt tied into this uh, hook up here because there's a safety switch in here. Um, if you're not buckled up, uh, it would only limit you, I think, to like 10 or 15 miles an hour max until you buckle up. But we, I, this is how I'm doing it for now. <laughs> Slapping it in, it's always buckled up. I will wear my seatbelt from time to time if I'm doing a lot more road travel or uneven terrain where it's kind of dangerous, yes, I will buckle up then. Most of the time, I, you know, fence fixing and whatnot, it's like how many times you get in and out, I do not want to buckle up every single darn time, so just get by with that. I know I've heard of some people actually um, bypassing it completely, you know, forming a full, completing the full circuit on its own with some soldering because the switch, the connection's actually just right underneath this seat here. I go to it right now. Go go to the other side here. I got to show underneath there anyway. So, so but there are storage compartments underneath these seats as well. Oof, that dust. Lift, just lift it up, and you got storage in here. Right here is that safety switch right here, cable right here. Um, you got some fuses here, some other connections. I think some relays in there. Um, yeah, we got a gun in here, wrapped in a case and a towel so it keeps it clean of course storage compartment so it's down here for now but this can also be removed here and you have access to your batteries battery i should say and there's a little bit of stuff there I should blow that out some grass clippings i'm gonna i'm gonna blow off the machine here a little bit while it's out here and here's my relay for my rear lights here i got it mounted right there fits fits just fine there plenty of room here to work with so at least it's just dust back here and some grass seeds, I guess. But like I say, those mud flaps really keep it cleaner. Especially these back here, really keep it a lot cleaner in here. Just more or less dust. You have to just worry about dust in here. I think that covers about everything on for this Ranger. Um, yeah, so far... So far it's worked really good um i'm happy to report that no issues with it really for this 2017 model it's worked good like i say it's kind of an early review only 700 miles on it uh but you know it's worked good for fixing fence pulling a trail around too and yeah it's it's scaled hills just fine and, and actually was great for fence fixing really liked using it we're good but we'll see how it holds up from years for years to come here. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you got any questions about it, I'll see if I can answer it. I hope I kind of covered most of the stuff. Hope I didn't miss anything. But yeah, that's the Polaris Ranger 900 2017 model. So far, so good. Couple minor things that could be addressed. And, and whatnot, maybe a couple other options they could add to the mix, you know, like some mud flaps or something like that to keep things a little cleaner for, 
for, you know, like me personally, I like to keep machines a little bit cleaner when I can. That is my preference anyway, so. But yeah, there you go. Ah, much cleaner, look at that. Nice and clean now. Piece of cake, when it's just dust, piece of cake to clean it. Nothing to it. Nothing much to it. Yeah, a little bit more dust down there yet, but yeah, piece of cake to clean. 